this whole transfer of trust takes time, this investment of you, but over time it yields amazing results because you're transferring great client relationships to great people on your team who can then take that relationship and run with it, freeing you up to focus on bigger picture strategy and direction. G'day team, Josh here. Hope you're having an amazing day. Today I want to talk to you about the importance of and the process for transferring trust to your staff. So fresh off a call with our boardroom clients today, we're working with a particular incredible client. It's interesting how this stuff comes up, right? Because we were talking about, you know, my client getting support for like admin support for someone to take over the running of his emails. And we were unpacking that and he was like, oh, well, I don't think that, you know, I've got so many emails that I need to look after um, because I've got so many projects on my plate that I don't think there's any benefit of having an admin person run my emails because it's all stuff that I need to look at. Look at. And I was like, well, let's unpack that because, and like we went through a whole bunch of reasons and, and benefits to having someone else running his emails for him. And, you know, we had 20 on other business owners on the call today and it was like just, it was, it was a great kind of reset training to really teach our boardroom members the importance of valuing your time. And I've gone off topic already a minute into this training in terms of transferring trust to your staff. But like the initial, the, the reason why this came about was because we were talking about, well, you know, the benefits of having someone else run your email account for you are vast and immense. And, you know, we unpack kind of three key areas. And I'll just kind of quickly go through them with you now um, before we get onto the, the, the original reason why I started this training. So, you know, the, the benefits of like the three benefits of having someone else run your emails for you. Uh, number one, you know, you, you know, then that someone else is in charge of your emails and the importance of you time in your day to focus on your big picture stuff, the big rocks that you do that no one else can do that allows you to move the business forward. Like, I don't even know if you could put a price or a value on that. And so, so many of us are trained and ingrained to turn up to the office every day. The first thing that we do is open our email account. And the first thing that we do, and the second thing that we do is start to go through the emails that have come through overnight and the things that we didn't get to yesterday, and we just start responding. And so the problem with that is you are allowing other people's priorities to run your days and your weeks. Because if you think about it, clients are sending you emails, team are sending you emails, and you're sitting there responding to them. You are in reactive mode and you are allowing other people's priorities and agendas to control your day. So the first thing is don't underestimate the empowerment of getting to the office in the morning and not opening up your email account as the first thing that you do. Getting to the office and actually going, right, what are my three to five big rocks that I need to get done today and starting working on them, knowing that you've got an admin support there uh, who's going to log in in half an hour or an hour and they're going to start to manage all your emails for you. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, you know, really recognizing that even, and, and so we, we, we've got a bunch of trainings that we run in boardroom and show, like we've got an email management system or email management training that we run for our boardroom clients. It kind of step-by-step -step shows people how to have someone else run your emails for you. But one part of that training is that you have a little folder that is yours in terms of the stuff that you have to respond to. And so the second thing here is if you've, even if you've got someone who's filtering 30, 40, 50% of those emails and actioning them and sending them onto your team and replying to them and that sort of stuff, that is 30, 40 or 50% of your emails that you don't have to do to your, do yourself. So again, it's this whole concept of buying back your time and having someone else do things that are, let's be honest, low value tasks for you, high value tasks for them, but allows you to free yourself up to do high value stuff. And the third thing is, it, it, it again, is this time piece. It's like knowing that once or twice a day, you log in to your emails. That's your dedicated time, set out in your calendar, you log into your emails, and that's what you do. You focus half an hour on the emails that are in your folder and you ignore everything else. So again, you're just getting super focused and super strategic about where you're investing your time. So I digress, but there are three, three reasons why having someone to run your emails for you is incredibly important. But the way that this came about was my client was like, well, you know, I've got so many projects on the go and I get so many project emails that I don't think there's any relevance in me having someone else run my emails for you because I'm just going to have to respond to all of them. And I was like, well, let's talk about that. Why are you the busiest person in the office? Why do you have 36 uh, active projects 
in the business as the business owner and everyone else on your team's got five as an example. Let's talk about that. And so it came down to this whole concept of transferring trust to your stuff. And this is such a big thing for business owners to move past is this whole short-term, I'll just get it done myself because the client knows me. I'll get it done quicker. I know the project. I can't even comprehend transferring this project or this key client relationship off to someone on my team. So therefore, I'm just going to do it myself. And it's this whole like short-term focus or mentality that's sabotaging the long-term growth of your business. And so what I encourage my clients to do and everyone on the call today was to step back and go, well, where do you see yourself? Where, where do you want your role to be in the business in six to 12 months time? Do you want to be on all of these projects and still being the, you know, the main key client relationship person and the main contract for your clients and having to answer all these emails? And of course, the resounding answer is no, I want to be the business owner. I don't want to be focusing on the growth of my business and the direction of my business. And I want to have a great team of people underneath me who are delivering those projects and the clients calling those people. That's what I want. And I'm like, well, I love that. I love that vision for you. You've got to now make that happen. And the way that you're currently running your business and the way that you're currently running your clients and your projects is not facilitating that transition to that broader, longer term vision that you have for the role that you want to be are doing in the business. So what I want to do for you now is kind of talk you through that transferring of trust process because it is a process and you will get annoyed. You will get frustrated. You will be like, this is a waste of my time. But the reason why I get you to connect to that longer term vision is, well, that's where I'm going. So where I'm going is less project work, less client interaction or requirement for me to be on projects with my clients more focus on strategy and vision. That's where I'm going. Great. The short-term work that I have to do is transferring trust to my staff so they can run projects without me. And I use a very real example with my clients today about, you know, when I was a project manager and director of a, a civil consultancy back in the day, we had this very, very same process that we went through. You know, I was working on a, a great client's portfolio. They'd been a, you know, they were spending two million bucks a year with us in, in consulting fees. They'd been with us for many, many years, but I was going to move on to a, a much bigger project with a much bigger client. And, you know, we as directors decided that I would have to transition that client relationship just to my 2IC in order for me to focus all of my, my PM time on that, that main client and that main project. And then obviously then I had my direct responsibilities outside of that. It's got to be one, a business decision. Two, you've got to find the right person because there's no point investing time, effort, and energy in transferring trust to a staff member that you don't like or you don't see a future in the business with or they don't have the right characteristics or attributes. So once you're clear on, I need to do this and I've found the right person, so it's looking at your team and going, who would be that right person to transfer this relationship to? It's then committing to that and investing in that person. So we and, and knowing that you will make less profit on that, those projects in the interim for a longer term gain. Let, let's talk about that. So the process we went through was really, you don't make this big song and dance about it. You don't announce to your client, hey, Sam's going to be working on your projects now. See ya. It's like a business decision internally. And then it's you as the business owner having to walk down the path of transferring trust from the client to your 2IC or to that staff member. So the process we went through was like, it's going to be probably a six month transition. Um, I'm just going to start taking uh, my 2IC to all the project meetings with me. Hey, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Client, this is Sam. This is you, Sam. This is Sam. Sam's just going to be coming to me, coming to all of these meetings with me now, um, extra support on your projects. And the client's like, great, cool. But what's happening is Sam's immersing himself in that, all the projects. He's getting to know that client, all the projects that the client has. He's starting to come to all those meetings, starting to add value. And what I mean by lower profit on those projects is you've obviously got two people, director and a senior person, putting time to that particular project. So you're going to make less, or well, that client portfolio, so you're going to make less profit on those projects for a longer term gain, which is you're then transferring that trust to your staff member. So for a period of time, Sam just shadows you to all those project meetings. And then you start to say, hey, Sam, can you just send the client a quick email to let them know that X, Y, and Z has been lodged or that we're actioning their request? 
hey, Sam, can you just give the client a quick call just to let them know that we're doing X, Y, and Z or that we've seen their email uh, or would they, would they like to come to this upcoming meeting? Like you're constantly looking for ways and reasons and excuses to put Sam in front of that client. And what you're doing is slowly, oh, I might just miss this meeting. Hey, Mr. and Mrs. Client, you know, and this is kind of four to six months in. I really sorry I can't make today's meeting, but Sam's across it. You've been talking to Sam for ages. He knows the project's inside and out. He's going to fill in for me today. I'll come to the next one. And what you're doing is just a slow, methodical transfer of trust to that staff member. And over time, what you're doing is training your client to call that particular person or to reach out to them because you have transferred that trust. And it is a long process. You will get stressed or frustrated because you're like, it's just quick or easy if I do it myself, which is why you have to keep coming back to the long-term play and long-term vision that you have for your business uh, and what you're trying to create. And so what this does is because we're so worried about what our clients will say or so worried about that staff member not being able to do it as good as us, we don't do this. And we're sabotaging the growth of our business. And we're also sabotaging our own happiness because there's only so many hours in a day, so many things that you as a business owner can do. So that's kind of what we talked, um, you know, one of our amazing clients and everyone on our boardroom call today through is this whole transfer of trust takes time. It's an investment of you, but over time it yields amazing results because you're transferring great client relationships to great people on your team who can then take that relationship and run with it freeing you up to focus on bigger picture strategy and direction. So I hope that helps. So team, if you'd like to keep doing this journey on your own, we obviously have a ton of free resources where you can keep doing that. But if you'd like to get some help, if you'd like to be on one of the calls that we had today with our boardroom community, I'd love to invite you to join um, our boardroom coaching program. So if that's you, if you're a business owner or an engineering consultancy or a business owner in the engineering industry, and you'd like some help to grow and upgrade your business and navigate the shortcuts uh, or sorry, navigate and go around the pitfalls and the frustrations and just get a straight line to that next phase of growth, send me a message, give me a call, shoot me an email, and let's have a chat about how you know we can work together in boardroom and help you grow your business faster. Have an awesome day.